Okay, this one's about the piston compressor operation. Now, this is a fairly simplistic thing. Uh, for those of you that don't really understand how the refrigeration compressor, the piston type compressor works, this may help you understand. You guys that know any more about it, it's probably just boring. But anyway, I gave this to my class for a number of years and I thought I would put it on uh, YouTube and see if it helped. Okay, here we have piston compressor. This is your suction line here. There's the valve, that little black thing there is a valve. Here's your piston and the cylinder. Here we have a discharge valve and it's then there's a discharge line coming out. So cold gas comes in here, is compressed, and goes out here. Now let's see if we can get this thing to run. Now don't laugh, I'm not very good at animation. But you can see the suction coming in here, the valve opens up as the piston goes down, goes over, and as the piston comes up, the discharge valve opens and the high pressure gas comes out. Okay, let's kind of start this thing. When the piston's at top dead center, now you can see right here, the piston's as far up as it'll go. That's top dead center. <clears throat> there are no, there's no movement of gas, the valves are closed. Okay, we'll put some numbers in here. 68 pounds is your suction pressure. As this piston starts to move down, that's going to reduce the pressure inside the cylinder because the cylinder area is getting larger. Now we've got 250 pounds on the head. So suction gas is going to come in because it's at 68 pounds and it's 60 pounds in here. So the 8 pound difference is going to allow gas to come in. Now as it gets all the way down to the bottom, now we're going to be pretty close to what the suction pressure is here. Because it's pulled that gas in there because of the pressure difference. Now this thing's going to start going back up. Now again, all the valves are closed at bottom dead center. Now the piston starts to rise, and this pressure, because I've got a lower pressure, or I've got a higher pressure in here because there's less space. I'm starting to move my piston up. Okay, piston's coming up farther. Now, when we get above the head pressure, head pressure is 250 pounds here. When we get to 260, this valve's going to open, and the gas moves out. Okay, one of the critical things here, there is a clearance volume. That's the distance between the top of the piston and the cylinder head. Now you want this as small as possible, but you also have another problem here. You need this to not quite hit. If it hits, of course, it's going to damage. Or if there's a place where liquids could catch in there, it'll damage the head or possibly the crankshaft or the piston or piston rod. So we need a very small clearance in here, but this clearance is very important for the efficiency. If it's too large, now we made this a little larger here. And the larger it is, the less efficient the compressor is. Now, let's go over this as it goes through its little thing. That could be oil, refrigerants, anything like that caught in there. Some compressors will set up a spring on the head so that when uh, oil or refrigerant gets in there, the head lifts a little bit. That's one of the ways they fix it. So remember that clearance on the top of the head is important and it has to be a certain distance 
to avoid interference, but if there's too much, the re-expansion of the gas will reduce the efficiency of the compressor. Now the next one we're going to go into this re-expansion of gas and we'll see if we can figure out how you can make the most efficient compressor. Anyway, that's it for the first installment on that one. I'll be uh, doing a couple more of these that, that show uh, different pressures and uh, re-expansions and so on. Anyway, that's it on that one.